Hi everyone! I'm so glad to see you here again on online classroom Jie Gu Diu. Today we are going to look at the classification of plants. Well, plants can be classified into two big groups. They are the non-flowering plants and flowering plants. Okay, just like the name suggests, plants here. Non-flowering plants do not produce flowers, and flowering plants they produce beautiful flowers. Non-flowering plants, however, can be divided or classified into three other groups. They are the moss, fern, and conifer. How about flowering plants? They can be classified into only two groups, which is the monocotyledon and dicotyledon. As a start, we will look at non-flowering plants first. Before we look at each group of non-flowering plants, Jekutio need you to understand two very important words. First, non-vascular. The non-vascular plants are very simple and they are small, and they do not have a vascular system. Whereas vascular plants, just like the name say, have Vascular system. What does vascular system do? Actually, it is the system that is in the plant that help them to transport water and food throughout the plant. And if the plants are vascular plants, it is normally very easy for you to tell what where are the leaves, the stems, and the roots. But not for the non-vascular plants. You will see when we look at the example. So, let's go to the example. The first group of non-flowering plants are the moss, and the moss actually reproduce by producing spores. And also, if you look at the picture, can you identify which part is the leaf, the stem, and the root? Not that easy, right? So this is what Jekutio mean that. The moss are actually non-vascular. How about the fern? Let's look at the pictures. Can you see all these little dots behind their leaf? Those are actually the spores. So just like the moss, the fern actually reproduce by producing spores. But different from the moss, it is very easy for you to identify where are the leaves. The stem, and I'm sure if you pull the fern off the ground, it's easy to tell where are the roots. So the fern are vascular. Next, let's look at this beautiful conifers. One good example of the conifer will be the Christmas tree, and they reproduce by bearing cones. If you look at those decorative Christmas trees. Around Christmas season, you will see the ornaments that actually look like this. They are the cones. Those are the things that conifer use to reproduce, and it is easy to tell that conifer are under vascular plants. Next, let's look at flowering plants. Just like the name suggests, flowering plants are plants that produce flowers. Why it is it is it important for them to produce flowers? Because these flowers will then become fruits, and in fruits you can find seeds. For example, in these pictures, you can see the flower of an okra plant, or in another name, it is the lady's finger. Okay, so these plants, the lady's finger plant, will produce flower first. And this flower will turn into lady's finger, and inside the lady's finger, you can find seeds. And what is cotyledon? What does it do? Well, the cotyledon is actually a place where the seed will store the food, and this food will be very important because the seed use them to germinate. Germinate means they grow. Okay, they grow into a new plant. So, if these seeds only have one cotyledon, they are grouped under monocotyledon. If these seeds has a pair of cotyledons, then we group them under dicotyledon. 
There are other things that we need to learn about monocotyledon and dicotyledon. Let's look at the monocotyledon first. So the monocotyledon, just like the name saying mono means one, only has one cotyledon. For example, a very good example will be the corn. Have you ever plucked those corns one by one off the cob and eat them like that? I know I have. So this is only one cotyledon. Next, let's take a look at their plants. Okay, first their leaf. Their leaf show parallel veins. Look at the leaf closely. It's like a lot of lines that are parallel to each other. How about their stem? Most of them have non-woody stem, meaning their stem looks green. It is not woody. But this is not absolute. Most of them, not all of them, okay? Next, look at their root. They have fibrous root, just like how the picture show here. Some example for monocotyledon plants will be the paddy and the maize. Okay, it is easy to identify if you would just look at their leaves. They have parallel vein leaves. Now let's proceed to dicotyledon. Well, just like the name said, di means two. D, two. So two cotyledons and one good example will be groundnuts or peanuts. If you look at the peanut, one peanut can be broken into two cotyledons. That's why they are dicotyledon. If we look, look at their plants, their leaves have network-like veins. It is very different from monocotyledon. If you look at the veins, they look like a net, right? Beautiful, beautiful pattern. Then if we look at their stem, different from monocotyledon, they have woody stem. You actually can see some woody part. And they have tap root, also very different from monocotyledon. What does tap root mean? It means you can have one very distinguished root, the main root, and then you have tiny little roots that looks like hair around it. But you can see one very uh, distinguished root, just like the carrot. Okay. So some examples of dicotyledon plants will be the tomato and durian okay and again one simple way to identify them is by looking at their leaves so that's all from Jekutio in this video the classification of plants is actually a lot more simpler compared to the classification of animals that we looked at in the previous videos do you agree so that's all from me i'll see you in the coming videos okay Bye! If you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.